Good evening and welcome to the Tri-Cities Mountain Empire Weekly Digital Fusion Net. This is N4NT, name is Adam, net control station for this evening's net. This net meets each Tuesday night at 9.30 p.m. Eastern Time in the Bristol Amateur Radio Club Fusion Room. The Mountain Empire Amateur Radio Society Room 40843 will serve as a backup should the Bristol Room be down at net time. Whenever possible, recordings of this net are uploaded to the Bristol Amateur Radio Club's YouTube page and broadcast live on the Bristol Amateur Radio Club's Facebook group page. We are uh, broadcasting live on Facebook tonight. Uh, we also have a web page with information about the net, and uh, we also try to put the links to the, those pages on that uh, web page, and it is qsl.net forward slash tcme for Tri-Cities Mountain Empire. This net emanates from the Tri-Cities area consisting of counties in Northeast Tennessee and the Mountain Empire of Southwest Virginia. All amateurs are welcome to check in. The purpose of this net is to promote good fellowship among amateur radio operators, encourage the use of the fusion digital mode, improve communication skills, allow contacts outside the Tri-City and Mountain Empire area, and to share technical information and comments with the group. In a moment, we'll begin taking check-ins. When checking in, uh, if you just check in, we'll come back to you for comments. Uh, if you do not wish to make comments, just let us know that you are in and out, and we'll put you on the list. And we'll give you an opportunity, should you change your mind later and uh, want to um, add something to the topic or make some other kind of uh, comments, we'll, uh, we'll open it back up for that. All right, we'll now begin taking check-ins. When checking in, please give your name, call, and location. NT, K4HQ, Ken and Gray. I'll be in and out. Hopefully everything's coming across your screen, okay? And for NT, Kilo Risky Mike Lima. Kilo Echo 4, Whiskey Mike Lima, Bree in Bristol, Virginia. Uh, Net Control, uh, check in Alpha Bravo 8 Radio Lima, ABARL, Tom and Scott Depot, West Virginia. Net Control. Please check in Kilo 8, Romeo, Romeo, Tango, Tim, and Hurricane, West Virginia. Net Control, please check in Scott, KB8, ZIO, that's Kilo Bravo 8, Zulu, India, Oscar, Cross Lanes, West Virginia. Net Control, please check in WW8RT, Whiskey Whiskey 8 Radio Tango, Steve in Milton, West Virginia. Net Control, please check in and 4 xrd Ralph in Chilhowie, Virginia. Net Control, please check in Kilo Echo 8, Lima Sierra November, Randy in South Charleston, in and out. Okay, let me go over uh, what I've got here. Uh, first, I had K4HQ. Ken in Gray, Tennessee. Ken, uh, everything was coming across fine. Your uh, your call sign was correct there on the on the screen. So it looks like you uh, you got the that radio going good there. Uh, 
um, KE4WML Bradley in uh, Bristol, Virginia. I uh, had a proxy check in um, that's monitored on Facebook, uh, KO4CJY Kevin in Abingdon, Virginia. Um, got him on the list there as a proxy check in over Facebook. Um, AV8RL, Scott, uh, Tom in Scott Depot, West Virginia. Uh, K8RRT, uh, Tim in West Virginia. KV8ZIO, uh, Scott in WW8RT, Steve um, off in West Virginia. Then we had N4XRD, Ralph in Chilhowee, Virginia. And KE8LSN, uh, Randy in West Virginia checked in and out. Thanks for checking in with us tonight, Randy. Um, Real quick, Kevin, if you're uh, monitoring us there, if, if you have a fusion cable for radio and would like to make comments, just uh, just send me a comment on Facebook and let me know. But uh, I'm assuming that you're you're just monitoring Facebook and checking in that way, and that's fine. Um, all right, did uh, did I miss anybody that uh, that doubled with somebody else? Any station that might have doubled with someone else? Uh, please let me know now. KE4WMX, Kilo Delta 4, Whiskey My Gas Rate, Ken and Glide Lodi. Okay, Ken got you on the list. Uh, usually, uh, if you're on 443, usually the 443 check ins, I, I monitor that with the radio. I usually record the net, but uh, Dallas said there might be an issue, so I'm. I'm Strictly monitoring six seven tonight, so that's probably uh, I would have, uh, would have missed you if you doubled in there. But uh, thank you for checking in. We'll be back for some comments. All right, we'll uh, go ahead and open it up once again. Any uh, any stations that would like to check in, please call. No, why the, my squelch was closed or something? But did you get me, Bradley? Kilo Echo Four Whiskey Mike Lima. Yeah, sure did, Bradley. I got you uh, number three on the list there on the net logger. And then uh, Dallas, I think you doubled there, but I did. I've got you on the list. I saw your call sign come up, so I'll, I'll come back for uh, comments. KD4CCO, Dallas, and Bristol, Virginia. Uh, any other stations, please call. Me. Nine Webby K Chicago Matt checking in, uh, no tra or uh, checking in and out, and also uh, Keeney Nine JSX checked in, said he might have traffic but he's working. So uh, when you get around to him, uh, he may or may not be there. Uh, back over to you from N Nine Webby K. Okay, uh, Chicago Matt. Uh, N9YBK got you on the list. Thanks for checking in. And uh, we'll put uh, KB9JSX on the list. And uh, we'll come back for comments. If uh, we usually give a couple calls, if uh, no answer, then um, we'll, we'll move on and give another opportunity at the, at the end there. Um, all right. Uh, any other stations like to check in, please call. KB0 VXN. This is Kilo Echo 8. Echo Whiskey Golf, Roger in Ohio. Okay, picked up a couple more there. KB0 uh, VXN, Mike in Minnesota, and uh, KE8 EWG, um, Roger in Ohio, got you uh, on the list. Thanks for checking in tonight. Um, all right, we'll, we'll do one more call before we go and uh, start taking some comments. Uh, any other stations, please call now. The next control, please check in. Kilo Echo 8, November Zulu Sierra, Mike and Tornado, in and out. Okay, 
Okay, that time we picked up uh, KE8NVS, Mike, in uh, West Virginia. Thanks for checking in with us tonight, Mike. Um, good to have you. All right, well, uh, of course, we'll take check-ins uh, again after we do a round of comments, but um, let's, uh, let's go ahead and take uh, take some comments here momentarily. Real quick, so I don't forget, I'll make a, a quick uh, net reminder announcement. Um, Tomorrow night at 9 o'clock, uh, for the local folks over on the 443 repeater, they have their uh, uh, FM net um, on 443 for the Mears group. And, of course, this, this is the uh, Eastern time I'm talking about. And then also uh, the Yard Dogs group in Wirezac room 40383 will be uh, tomorrow night at 9 o'clock. And we normally connect the uh, 146.670 repeater up with that, uh, that net. And um, the way those two nets run, you can actually make both of them. Uh, even though they started at the same time. So there's a couple, and I'll do some more as we go along. Um, just trying not to inundate you all at once with all this. All right. Uh, as we normally do, we have a, uh, a topic for tonight. And um, this uh, topic has been uh, hermetically sealed and kept in a uh, managed jar on Duncan Wavell Sports until noon today. And I will now reveal its contents. Um, topic for tonight is uh, speakers for your mobile or base radios. Tell us what you use. And as customary, I'll go ahead and answer the question myself. That way it'll give you an idea of what we're, uh, what we're looking at. Um, and basically, uh, there's been a lot of things, uh, innovations, I guess, in the, in the recent future, uh, recent time, <laughs> recent future, recent times, um, with uh, speakers and so forth, that uh, especially in your ham shack, that you can really enhance the sound that you're getting out of your radio and what you're listening to. Um, I know some folks uh, like headphones on HF and, and some folks use different types of external speakers and some just use what comes in the radio and some have these uh, parametric equalizers and that kind of thing. Let me reset. And that new, uh, that new Heil system is something in particular I'm kind of looking at in the future. But for right now, um, I just, I just run, I always run some type of external speaker, whether it's my, uh, everything except for my HTs, unless you count the, uh, the speaker mic, but, uh, right now in my shack, on my shack radios, um, I have, uh, really taken a liking to and have discovered, um, by, um, actually a couple free acquisitions that, that were given to me, the, the equipment no longer being used, but, um, the Motorola speakers, like you, Public safety, and you can actually buy these things. Uh, RNL Electronics sells them. I can't remember the price of them, but uh, I've got a few around my shack here connected. Uh, I'm listening to this uh, net right now on one, and my FTM 400 has two of them connected to it. I do dual audio channels out of it, and also run those uh, mobile. Um, seems like just a really good. You can tell a big difference between it and, and like an El Cheapo external speaker, which I've also used in the past. But uh, that's all I've got for right now. Eventually, uh, you know, I want to put some type of equalizer on there and have, some, have a really good quality sound coming out. All right, that's my answer to the question. So we'll go to our first check-in um, that has comments tonight and pose that question in your direction. Again, answering the uh, question or discussing the topic is stri strictly optional. And any other comments you'd like to make are certainly welcome. We'll start with Bradley, KE4 WML. Yeah, Adam, uh, thanks for letting me check in. Kilo Echo 4, Whiskey Mike, Lima. Um, I use uh, just basically the speak radio as normally I run an HT. Uh, with, you know, Fusion and uh, DMR and D-Star. However, when I have HF going, I use a, uh, it's like you were talking about, a Motorola um, powered speaker. It's an amplified uh, runs off 12 volts and uh, that thing is extremely loud and very clear. It works very well. I've always enjoyed a powered external speaker and I have that for uh, HF <clears throat> and uh, believe it or not I found it at a ham fest in a junk pile and he was giving them away and um, I picked up two or three and I've got two or three laying around that I don't use anybody wants one uh, you're welcome to it I've just got them laying around and I've got them so I have to look for it they're in boxes and from when we moved 
and years ago I still have uh, still have those and they're not in the greatest shape you know they were I guess police auction equipment but nonetheless they work great but that's about it um, there's some great speakers uh, on the market um, for shack use you know for high for high fidelity uh, guys but um, just most any speaker will do for me and that's about all I have Adam I really appreciate you uh, calling the net and uh, I'll talk to you again soon good to hear everybody too on the net Kilo Echo 4 Whiskey Mike Lima Bristol Virginia All right, Bradley, thanks for checking in. Good to have you on the net tonight. And, uh, yeah, that, uh, that kind of reminds me, too. I, I almost went with the optional uh, speaker that come, that you can get that matches the radio for my FT991. And when I, I connected this uh, Motorola speaker up, I was like, well, that's, that's good enough for now. But eventually I, I want to boost it a little bit. All right. Um, up next, uh, we have one of our West Virginia check-ins. So I'll take the opportunity real quick to uh, let you know that uh, the West Virginia Link Fusion Net Information Net in room 46488 is on, comes on Thursday at uh, 8 o'clock, and uh, that's a new time for that net, so uh, be sure and uh, check in with them, and we, uh, we try to connect the 146.67 repeater to that net as well, and uh, it's a really good net, and that's where I, I kind of got the idea to have a net topic. Um, with that, I will turn it to uh, Tom and Scott Depot, West Virginia, AB8RL. Good evening, Tom. Uh, N4NT and the net, uh, AB8RL. Uh, Very good, uh, Adam. Thank you for the uh, info on the uh, net Thursday nights at 8 o'clock. Uh, let's see. Speakers uh, on the uh, FTM 400. I use a. Uh, it's an old Radio Shack. It says realistic. It's a little black uh, mobile speaker. Uh, I've seen them around Hamfest. Uh, a lot of folks have them. They weren't very expensive. I think they were under twenty dollars when you were able to buy them. I have two of them, and they sound really good. And that's what I'm using um, on my uh, uh, VHF UHF radio here in the, in the home. Um, on HF. Uh, I use a Kenwood SP31. That was the uh, matching Kenwood speaker for the uh, Kenwood TS870. I uh, got it when I purchased a used 870 some years ago. The speaker came with it. And uh, But I've never bought a matching speaker for any of my radios because I always felt they were just way too expensive. Um, when I see speakers at 150 to 190 over $200 to match a radio, and it's a speaker. I, I just never saw it. So um, I've used anything but a matching speaker other than the one I picked up here, which came with the radio, and that's the one I'm using uh, all the time. And uh, yeah, I know Kim's on the net here, K-R-R-T. He's in a uh, town called Culloden, uh which borders Hurricane. When I think of him, I think of Hurricane. So we have Hurricane basically represented on the net tonight from the local area, and we have Tornado um, check in uh, KE8NZS so two two unique uh, towns uh, checking in the net tonight hurricane and tornado very good back to you uh, N4NT in the net AB8RL all right Adam thanks for checking in again tonight and uh, yeah uh, and hurricane and uh, tornado and of course uh, uh, Tesla season coming up especially <laughs> But, uh, and, and I'll take a moment to, uh, along that line, I guess, just to uh, remember the, the folks in Middle Tennessee that uh, you know, had the tornadoes come through, and I think uh, there was a death toll of around 24. So uh, you know, just keep those uh, the folks affected by that in your thoughts and prayers um, as well. All right, up next uh, we have Tim, K8RRT. Good evening, Tim. All right, very good, uh, N4NT and the net. Uh, this is K8RRT. Uh, yeah, it is very unique to, uh, to have uh, uh, two uh, towns uh, uh, 
uh, here uh, locally, uh, as Tom described. And I'll tell you another interesting one. My daughter moved uh, 2,500 miles away and to Utah, and uh, there's a community that she drives through to work. And uh, lo and behold, if it didn't call hurricane. And they, and they, instead of saying hurricane, they say hurricane. Uh, just like we say hurricane here in my, in my location here in West Virginia. So it's amazing, um, 2,500 miles and uh, find another hurricane to, to, you know, to live near. So uh, with that said, uh, yeah, we want to remember the, the, the uh, folks that uh, had to endure uh, uh, the, the mad, uh, the tornadoes and that devastation that, uh, that, that was experienced there in Tennessee. That's, uh, this is very, very difficult. A lot of times, uh, uh, it just goes without said. You read about it and you go on. But uh, our hearts and uh, our thoughts and prayers go out to those folks for sure. Um, to answer the question, uh, speaker, uh, I am a, a Motorola speaker guy myself, and uh, I have uh, three of those uh, Motorola speakers that uh, were also in the fire service, and I was able to uh, come across those as surplus and uh, to a local uh, fire department and. Uh, uh, I use one of those in my mobile, FT400, and uh, I also have another one here in the shack on this uh, FTM uh, 3207D that I'm talking on right now, so uh, uh, they, they definitely do a good job. Great question, and uh, uh, good evening to everyone else on the net. Uh, back to you, N4NT, this is K8RRT. Okay, Tim, thanks for, uh, for checking in, and, uh, yeah, I, I tell you, um, you know, you got you, different town names, you know, here in Bristol, I think there's several Bristols uh, in the United States, and then uh, the Bristol in, in England, they, uh, I think sometimes folks will dial, will dial into our, uh, or bring up our uh, wires extra and thinking that it might be, be uh, Bristol, England, because I just named it Bristol uh, ARC. And I uh, kind of did that on purpose so we get a little traffic up there every once in a while. It's, uh, it's kind of interesting. But uh, I tell you, one place that I have not found a second one of in the world, and of course I haven't looked it up lately, but my original home, my hometown where I'm from originally, I, I live in Bristol now, and I'm from a town called, uh, and we pronounce it Saltville, but up, uh, up there, but it's Saltville, Virginia, and I've not found another Saltville anywhere else in the world that I know of. But there might be one out there, you never know. All right, up next we have uh, Scott in West Virginia, KV-8, CIO. Good evening, Scott. Howdy, Adam, and the rest of the uh, folks on the net. Uh, that's a real good question that you you asked about speakers. Um, I, I used to have uh, some of the realistic speakers that Tom, Tom was talking about, and uh, right now I do not have any uh, external speakers on any of my two uh, mobiles, um, but uh, it's sort of funny how you brought this question came up, because another fella, we talked about uh, maybe using the uh, input jack on uh, the car stereo and using it it was a, just a thought and I haven't tried it yet still still been thinking about it but haven't tried about it and when I was on Yezu's uh, website last night uh, looking at uh, the uh, matching speaker uh, for the 991 I nah too much, way too much for a speaker. Uh, I can go to any, uh, uh, well, I can probably just run up to my old employer and uh, ask him if I can take one out of one of the uh, surplus ambulances. But with that being said, uh, I'll turn it back to you and uh, no extra speakers right now for me. KB8ZIO. Okay, Scott. Thanks for uh, checking in. Yeah, I um, got uh, Motorola speakers through uh, like old cars that were going to be discarded, uh, and got permission to go and grab those. And then I just uh, go to a local electronics store and get the 
glue that I can put on the end of the wire and uh, connect those. Those things work really good. But um, I'm glad you brought that up too. Something I did experiment with uh, my mobile FTM 400 that I've got out in my vehicle. I've got one of those uh, gadgets, whatever you want to call them, that's um, you plug into the accessory outlet and uh, it plays your uh, Bluetooth music or what have you over uh, over the car stereo. But you can also connect the the wired connection to that and it's stereo so I connected my FTM 400 to that and uh, actually uh, would play the audio over a, over a radio station into my AM FM radio it was okay um, one thing I did like about it it, it split the channels so um, the A side and the B side were coming on coming in from different sides of the vehicle and uh, it did put the A side over on the left for me which was closer to me and I liked that but uh, it uh, I probably could have adjusted on it and made it sound a little better than what it did, but I was just playing around with it to begin with. Uh, all right, up next we have uh, WW8RT, uh, Steve in West Virginia. Good evening, Steve. Good evening, Adam and everyone on the net. WW8RT, Steve. Uh, kind of interesting that you brought that question up. Um, I've been uh, looking at some catalogs and kind of going through, thinking about uh, adding some external speakers to uh, my radios. And uh, as Tom said, uh, the ones that match the radios seem to be extremely expensive, and I'm not sure if they're worth uh, the money um, for those speakers. Um, so uh, it's interesting to hear that everybody likes the Motorola speakers, but so far I haven't seen those in a catalog. Um, the uh, the speaker that I do have downstairs on my uh, HF radio is an ICOM SP20, which is a, a fairly old speaker, um, and it's got a little bit of a, an issue. So that's why I was looking at new speakers. Um, I bought it at a ham fest, uh, and, and it was used then, so I didn't pay a, a whole lot for them, and the price for them today is uh, just outrageous. So uh, I think it will be a very good topic, and uh, looking forward to hearing all the, uh, the answers everybody has and what they're using. With that, I'll turn it back over to Net Control. This is WW8RT. Okay, Steve, thanks for, uh, for checking in. And uh, I know a couple of people mentioned those realistic speakers. I actually had, um, had one of those during my CB days. And, um, well, come to think of it, I, I think when I got my amateur license, I, I still had those and, and used them with a HT and a mobile rig that I had several years ago. But uh, thanks for checking in and uh, thanks for the, uh, the information. And I, I'm agreeing with... Uh, most of the group here as, as we go along. Those matching speakers are a little bit expensive. Uh, I might pick one up a few years when they're out there on the used market or something if they're decent, but uh, it's not that important to me to have the, have the I am OCD, but to have the uh, speaker match the radio at the, you know, for that price especially. All right, up next we have N4 XRD. Good evening, Ralph. Good evening, Adam, and everybody on the net. Well, I'm surprised nobody's mentioned headphones. I do have some Heil headphones that I use. Uh, I guess I spent the first year of being a ham uh, just learning how to listen, and uh, that's that's a fine art in itself, so the, the ear is as important as the speaker. But uh, early on, I had an FT450D, which I still have, and I'm driving up the interstate one day and I see a truck stop and I say, I'm going in there and getting a speaker. So I went in there and I got a President 711 SX for 15 bucks and I'm still using it to this day, hooked up to the same radio. And it's not a bad speaker. It works pretty well. Next I bought some West Mountain Radio Com speakers because I was running a computer that didn't have any speakers. And I had an SDR dongle and sometimes I used the internet SDR, so I needed a speaker system, and that worked pretty well. And uh, then uh, I had my Yaesu uh, FTM 400 in such a funny position that I needed a, needed a speaker for it, so I bought the uh, MLS 200 
M10 external waterproof round 50 buck speaker for that radio and it's it's turned out pretty good but uh, I guess the thing I'm listening to on now is the Yaesu SP20 which doesn't match any of my equipment but it's a pretty darn good speaker but I paid a fortune for it but now for the most interesting part my wife reports that the princess phone in the bedroom upstairs which is pretty close to the HFN fed halfway feed puts out a 5x9 signal while in the hung up position she has a clear copy which is accompanied by an occasional beep from the hardwired smoke detector nearby so I may have a little problem once I hit 500 watts anyway that's the story here from the dungeon and for XRD back to you Yeah, Ralph, well, just when you think you've got it figured out, you make some kind of change and then everything uh, just goes catastrophically different or wrong, what, whatever you, whatever terminology, I know what you mean. Um, moved some things around in my shack and then picked up interference I didn't have when things were the way they were before. So, and I'm getting ready to um, add a small amplifier to my station and eventually I'm going to have a have a bigger one, and I'm sure there'll be some things to uh, deal with when it comes to that, but uh, hopefully not with uh, my antennas uh, on my HF stuff well over 70 feet in the air. I caught a good branch on a tree. Maybe that'll that'll help uh, keep it away. Hopefully it won't uh, mess with the neighbors, though. I can contend with my own interference. <laughs> All right, up next we have uh, Ken in uh, Quiet Lodi, Virginia, KD4WMX. Good evening, Ken. Well, good evening, Adam. This is Katie Ford of MX in Quiet Lodi. <clears throat> Excuse me, I brought my throat. Get out of there. But anyway, um, well, I'm listening to all these hams that got speakers, external speakers, and uh, I know never have and probably never will use external speaker. Um, so just don't see the need for them. But uh, <laughs> uh, I guess it's whatever floats your boat, I guess. But uh, not much more to report here. Hopefully, W4DWN can get back in here before too long. He's taking classes and works keeping him busy. So uh, I'm looking forward to hearing him on the radio. And Appreciate you picking up the net, and we'll set, say 73 and turn it back to you. And for NT, this is KD4, WMX Square. All right, Ken, thanks for checking in. And yeah, definitely uh, nothing wrong with using what uh, what comes in the rig if it works. Um, that's the case for me and my um, 7250 I've got out in my cruiser. Um, it's more convenient that way, and that little speaker on the front of that radio, uh, it, it packs quite a punch, so uh, I don't have a need to try to add anything else to it, even one of these Motorola speakers, so just, just roll with it like it is. All right, up next we have uh, KD4CCO. Good evening, Dallas. Good evening, Adam. Uh, yeah, I just... The, uh, my presentation on the uh, computer screen was a little bit slow, so I didn't know if I was transmitting or not. Uh, I just look at the, I swapped the antennas on this radio, but I don't think that was a very good a decision because the radio is showing high FWR, so I guess I need to do some work on antennas. Uh, the other antenna that I was using before was showing the Hey, it's distortion. And this antenna on now shows the highest that you are, so I'm, I'm, in, I'm in trouble, I guess. I'll keep it short so I don't burn the finals out on this radio. Uh, we'll play 73s and turn it back to net control. This is KD4 CCO. Uh, 
okay, Dallas, thanks for checking in, and uh, and don't don't do like I did, which I, I believe you're uh, you're a lot smarter than uh, than me, especially when it comes to the, uh, when it comes to radios. But uh, don't uh, don't check your uh, your antenna according to the repeater's output frequency and get aggravated because the SWR is too high. <laughs> I did that on a uh, this vertical that I just put in here a while back, and uh, I put my analyzer on it and I checked it for. Uh, Peter's uh, output frequency, and it was it, it wasn't excessive, but it was getting a little too high for my liking for for something I was going to run on a regular basis. Well, then when I realized, oh, and I tuned back to the input frequency, and the SWR was just about flat, I was like, yeah, they they, they knew what they were doing when they built this thing. <laughs> uh, all right, uh, up next, uh, see uh, Chicago Matt was in and out, but I'll take this opportunity to uh, plug. Um, some of their nets as well. Uh, the uh, Friends of Amateur Radio Group. Um, Monday nights, uh, they have a net at uh, 9 o'clock our time here, uh, or Eastern time, at room 43815. And we try to connect the 146.67 over Peter to that. And then uh, Friday nights, they have a uh, uh, teapot, I think it's called teapot and PU's tech net, uh, same room at uh, 8 o'clock. Um, they also, there are some other nets that they have. Those are two that we connect to the uh, local repeater to. But uh, if you check out the Friends of Amateur Radio Group, FARG Facebook page, you can see the listing of all their nets that they have. And they also have some morning nets at 9.30 Eastern. Um, and it's escaping me right now the days of the, the net. I know uh, Tuesday is one of the days. Um, but it's the uh, called the Easy to Hear net. And it comes on in the mornings. I don't always connect the... Uh, local repeater to that, but I do occasionally uh, when I think about it and try to check in. And again, anybody here local is more than welcome to access the node and, uh, and connect up with any of these nets should we uh, um, miss them or if there's a who want to participate in the morning nets. All right, Matt was in and out, so we'll uh, we'll give uh, KB9JSX a try. Uh, good evening, Jeff. Uh, it's Tony, KD9JSX, and uh, good evening to everybody on the net. Um, I am working, so I'm kind of trying to do 200 things here at once. But anyway, uh, I use a Wilson speaker. I bought it at a truck stop, and uh, I use it on my FTM 400. On my 991A, I bought the uh, fancy matching uh, speaker. I'm very disappointed with it. Uh, I'm going to get another speaker for it. But along the same lines, I wanted to uh, mention that uh, uh, being a trucker, I have GPS, I have radio, I have uh, uh, phone, I have all kinds of stuff going on in here. Um, I actually looked into, I haven't done it yet, but I looked into and I think I'm going to get myself a mixer where I can have everything go into one speaker. Uh, and just uh, go through a mixer and, uh, and it'll, uh, it'll switch whatever's, uh, whatever signal's going at, at, at whatever time. So. Uh, Anyway, uh, back to net control, KD9JSX. Okay, Tony, I apologize. I called you Jeff because I plugged your call sign in wrong. Uh, I put you as a KV instead of a KD, but I got that corrected. So thanks for checking in. And uh, Yeah, I like that idea, too. That's something I'm, uh, you know, I'm, I would spend a little extra money uh, for something like that as opposed to, like, the, the matching speakers. I would, some type of mixer or what have you where, uh, Pretty much feed all your radios into it. I, that's that's a possibility I'm I'm looking at. Um, up next we have uh, KB Zero VXN uh, Mike in Minnesota. Good evening, Mike. Good evening, Adam. Everybody else on the net tonight. Adam, I think I spoke with you here some weeks back um, on your talk group here. So anyway. Just uh, at work here, hanging out, and just surfing through some talk groups, and came across you guys. So I thought I'd check in. Um, in answer to the question, I think the only rig I have that has an external speaker is a old vintage Kenwood TS520. I bought a matching speaker for it on eBay. Otherwise, I've just always used uh, built-in ones. Um, heard a lot of guys mention Motorola. I know they're good. We have them in all our work trucks. And they definitely have plenty of uh, audio, that's for sure. So, otherwise, not a whole lot new. 
um, radio-wise, I guess, I've been on HF a little bit. Managed to get a few contacts with VPA PJ last week. Hadn't uh, worked a new one in a while, so that was kind of fun. But uh, anyways, thanks for letting me check in here tonight, and uh, I'll tell everybody or wish everybody a good evening. Back to you, Adam, and for NT from KB Zero VXN Seven Three. Okay, Mike, thanks for checking in, and uh, yeah, good to hear from you. I've been a little active on HF lately myself. Well, except for the last two days, I've been working over the weekend work contests and spent quite a bit of time on the, on the FT8. I'll have to check my log and see if we've ever, ever run across each other on, on any of those. Um, all right, up next, uh, the last we have on the comment list uh, before we take check in is uh, KE8 EWG Roger in Ohio. Good evening, Roger. EWG, you still with us? Okay, well, we'll open it uh, back up before we close uh, for anyone that, was, that didn't get in on comments that would like to. Uh, that brings us to the bottom of the, the check in list. Um, had one station in and out after that. So we'll go ahead and open it up. Are there any stations that would like to check in with us tonight? Please call. N4KZS. Connie Flats, Gary. K8LIN, Brad in Decula, Georgia. Good evening, in and out. Uh, Paul, up in Quincy, Massachusetts. Good evening. KO4 CJU Brad in Piney Flats, Timothy in and out. Net Control, please check in. NS9V, November Sierra 9 Victor, Corey in Metropolis, Illinois. Okay, we picked up a few more there. I uh, got N4KZS, Gary in Tennessee, uh, K8LIN, Brad in Georgia. Got you in and out, Brad. Thanks for checking in tonight. KC1HHK, uh, Paul in Massachusetts. Got you uh, checked in. And one of our uh, our local new hams, uh, KO4CJU, uh, Brad in Piney Flats. Got you in and out tonight, Brad. Good to hear you. And NS9B, uh, Corey in Metropolis, Illinois, got you checked in. Um, any other stations that would like to check in, please call. Kilo Whiskey 4, Alpha Golf. Before AT, Dennis got you on the list. Uh, any other station? Okay, I meant to double check, make sure we didn't uh, miss any doubles, but I think we had enough. We went over the list and had enough dead airspace there that uh, we should have had opportunity, but if not, We'll, uh, we'll take check-ins again after we run through some of these. Um, all right, uh, in, in case uh, the new check-ins are just joining us, the uh, question tonight, we want to know about uh, about your speaker setup, your uh, receive audio. Um, what kind of uh, system are you using? If you're using a system, or are you using external speakers, or just what's in the radio, or, or what have you, is kind of what we're looking for. And the person that I was really thinking about when I came up with this question, I sort of tailored this question for, because uh, he's got a pretty cool setup, uh, is 
in 4 KZS. Good evening, Gary. Hey, good evening, Adam. Uh, I'm working the repeater direct with a handheld, so I hope uh, I'll complete the key so. Say good evening to everyone checking into the net. And, uh, <clears throat> yeah, I have a, I have a, uh, five channel, uh, mixing station, mixer that I feed all of my radios into. You're actually, uh, because you're using mono, it's actually a five panel stereo, so you can, uh, you've actually got ten mono uh, inputs on it, and, uh, I feed it out to, uh, to a amplified, powered amplified set of JBL speakers. Uh, <clears throat> works real fine, you, you're able to control uh, all of your volumes and your tones on every radio that you're using and, uh, from, from the mixer station. So that makes that nice. And it does, uh, does make a big difference in your audio quality, especially, uh, on any digital audio coming into the shack, whether it's on the, uh, the police scanner or on, uh, Wars X, uh, you know, Yazoo Digital, what makes a big difference in the quality. Uh, it handles the digital sound much better than just the smaller speakers. But anyway, that's what I got, and uh, I also use a uh, high old uh, headset, I think the Pro 4, or something like that, speaker mic with it. I usually use it when I'm doing some control operations on HF. But uh, with that, turn it back to you. Hope you got it all. Uh, back to next control from N4 KZS. Yes. Okay, Gary, thanks for checking in. Yeah, you made the repeater just fine. Uh, no problem at all. And, uh, yeah, that's good to hear. I, uh, you know, we talked briefly about that system that you've got and uh, picked up some... Uh, new interesting information about it that's something I'm looking into to doing myself at some point so uh, I know uh, the times that I've been to your shack and stuff it's uh, I've at least heard the scanner and stuff coming through it it's, uh, you know, it's a good sounding system uh, alright up next we have uh, KC1 HHK I believe you're checking in with us for the first time tonight Paul uh, good evening Uh, KC1HHK, uh, Paul here in uh, Quincy, Massachusetts, and uh, checking in for the first time. You're right, Adam. Uh, Quincy is located about five miles south of Boston, uh, just to give everyone kind of a reference. Uh, and I, I found, found out about this net on the uh, WiresX Facebook page, so just in case you keep a track and flipping through. Uh, you know, the Facebook this morning and came across this, so I thought I'd check in, and uh, and it's been very, very, very entertaining for the last 45 minutes or so. Uh, let me break for a sec. Um, to answer your question on the speaker, uh, I'm running an FTM 400 with just a, uh, what I would call a generic Uniden speaker. Uh, as my external, and uh, it sounds great. So, uh, and I agree, by the way, with uh, some of these uh, boutique speakers that are out there. A lot of money for, uh, I don't think, a lot of uh, benefit. So, that's it. KC1HHK back to net. Uh, Adam, good to uh, meet your acquaintance, and uh, good luck to everyone. KC1HHK. Okay, Paul, welcome to the net. Thanks for checking in and uh, and the information there. Yeah, I definitely agree agree with you there on the uh, um, matching speakers or, or what have you. That uh, just a lot of money for uh, for a little effect. Other, other than when uh, when you take a picture of it and put it on 
Facebook or QRZ, it does make your radio look a little more expensive than it ought to because it, it makes it more expensive. <laughs> the way I look at that. Um, real quick, uh, net reminder also, uh, Saturdays at 8 o'clock, the um, um, screen turned here. Hey, okay, Saturdays at 8 o'clock, the uh, Kentucky All Digital Net, uh, room, Wires X Room 40806, and that's 8 o'clock Eastern Time. And we do try to connect the local 146.67 over meter to that net. That is a big net. Uh, that one, uh, they have to kind of break down the uh, the check-ins uh, by different categories in order to make sure everybody can get into that one. Or it's it's not quite uh, as difficult as America Link, but it uh, it can take you a few tries. But um, we do try to tune into that one. All right. Up next uh, for comments, we have uh, NS9B uh, Corey Metropolis. Good evening, Corey. Uh, good evening, Adam, and everyone listening to the net tonight. I uh, hope all you guys out there on the East Coast are doing good. Um, been kind of a uh, uh, good weekend for me. Uh, did a little bit of the HF contest. My first time ever uh, logging contacts in that. I went ahead and sent in a log for the contest. Uh, first time ever doing that so anyway it was a little bit of fun doing some DX this weekend um, as for the question I don't have any external speakers I would like to get one for the 400 uh, what I'm talking on now uh, because it just sounds a little bit hollow um, I like the sound of the FT70 better the handheld seems just has a little bit bassier sound to it with the digital uh, than the 400 does uh, it's got plenty of audio, but and it just sounds kind of hollow to me, so I would like to get a speaker. And I enjoyed the topic tonight because it gave me a lot of ideas on what to do. Uh, so with that, I'll say 73 East to everybody who's listening to the net tonight. And uh, uh, 73 East from the hometown of Superman here in Metropolis, Illinois. I'll send it back to net control, NS9V. All right, Corey, thanks for checking in and uh, appreciate the information. Yeah, I think uh, we keep uh, we keep the topics flowing kind of like they are. Eventually, we will, we will help someone uh, or, or even ourselves. We'll, we'll build a whole shack. Maybe we'll talk about power supplies or something uh, uh, one of these rounds and <laughs> later on or something. Something like that. Uh, at some point, I'm going to start jotting these down because I'm going to, after about a year, I'll probably forget what I've already talked about. But if everybody else does, though, it kind of works out. We can just recycle one, right? All right, up next we have uh, KW4AG. Good evening, Dennis. Right, good evening, Adam. Good evening, everybody on the net. Uh, kind of busy. I got, uh, got called out. I'm out in the, the middle of the sticks down here at Flag Pond, so I'm glad my... Uh, Glad my jumbo spot still works down here. Anyway, uh, not much else going on. I, I don't really have any external speakers. I just use the uh, speakers that come with the radio or, or a speaker mic in the case of the DMR radio. So uh, I don't really have any external speakers. Uh, anyway, uh, back to you, uh, Adam, KW4AG. Hi, Des. Thanks for uh, for checking in. Yeah, I tell you, uh, when my FT991 was uh, out in California being repaired, I had to uh, rely on one of my HTs, and I connected it to my external uh, antenna, outside antenna, but also to my external speaker, and it uh, made that little radio sound like a big radio. But uh, and uh, we did uh, we did get one mention of um, at least one anyway, maybe more, but uh, headphones uh, as we went went through there. Actually, a couple of mentions. I'll tell you something that I do that works uh, really well in my opinion. Um, I have to. Uh, I have a set of uh, headphones that I take to the uh, the shooting range with me when I go uh, go shooting for work or even on my own time. And uh, it's those uh, the type that um, you know, the noise canceling, but you can also uh, turn them on and be able to hear have a conversation in the middle of the noise because it it doesn't block out the lower decibel audio. Um, well, I was working a contest one night and the kids were getting a little rowdy and I was having a hard time hearing so I just grabbed those things and I took a, uh, uh, they have a port 
on them and took a wire connected to that port and connected to the headphone jack of the, uh, of the 991 and that's what I use for headphones and uh, of course I don't turn on the outside speaker with the extra noise coming in. It shuts everything in the room out and I can, I can hear really well with them. But, uh, so that's, I, I wasn't even thinking about that to, to bring up as a speaker topic. All right, this is N4NT with the Tri-Cities Mountain Empire Fusion Net. Do we have any other stations that would like to check in? Okay, we have uh, one last call for check-ins. Any stations would like to check in, please call. Okay, nothing heard. Uh, does anyone else have anything for the net before we close? Bob Barker for the Price is Right, reminding you to have your pet spayed or neutered. Um, we had a total number of 23 check-ins tonight, and we're going to go seven, I'm sorry, six states represented. Um, actually, no, that is seven. I had another one there towards the end, I forget that. Seven states represented, and one time we had 11 notes connected. Uh, only one country represented tonight, and that was the USA. And we'd like to thank each one of you for taking time to check into the net. Just a reminder, uh, the net has uh, has been recorded uh, on Facebook Live, and I will transfer that video in the next couple of days over to the Bristol Amateur Radio Club's YouTube channel. Um, check that out for uh, net recordings and other interesting uh, videos of ham radio activity as well as educational value. Um, you're also welcome to join the Bristol Amateur Radio Club's uh, Facebook group page, and there's also a um, Mountain Empire Fusion Net um, Facebook page that you can uh, check out that uh, kind of predated this combined net that we had, so we put info out on both of those. All right, um, this is the N4NT closing the Tri-Cities Mountain Empire Fusion Net at 1027 p.m. Eastern Time, 7-3 and good night.